Hello and welcome to another episode of Tactical Edge. I'm Siobhan Cleveland for Air Force Public Affairs. Today we have Major General Jeffrey Pennington, Commander of 4th Air Force, along with our 4th Air Force Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Cynthia Villa. Thank you both for being here. Hey, thank you, Siobhan. It's been a while. Thank you. It's good to be here. I'm so glad to see you. It's been a while since you've both been on air. And uh, Chief, we miss your voice. It's always good to hear the boss, but it, we miss you. It's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, sir, we're going to start off with our last podcast. Podcast. We talked about exercises, and you know, you've been out on many visits this year and what that meant overall for Fourth Air Force. Today we're going to kind of hone in on what it means, I guess, specifically for units and the airmen out there. If you want to just kind of uh, go go in get into that a little bit. Hey, thank you, Shimon. I will. I think historically the way we've been operating – you know, in uh, in Southwest Asia for a couple of decades now has been pretty consistent. And potential adversaries have had the ability to, to study the way we go about doing our business. And I think what the, has been clear from our senior leadership is that we need to be prepared to execute our wartime mission in a different way. And so the emphasis on exercises has been to grow the ability within a unit and an organization from a from the wing group all the way down to the squadron and each airman to understand the complexities, the nuances, the skills required to think through how to build readiness training in a real-time environment. You know, not just get to the unit on drill weekend and get through the basic requirements, but rather how do you employ those and how are you going to have to dynamically task the organization to actually implement and leverage those. And when an environment is challenged, in other words, if our communications are disrupted or our supply chains are disrupted, we're going to get into something we call, you know, warrior ethos. And, Chief, I know this is something you've been talking about with the enlisted corps as well. And that is the ability to outthink, outmaneuver, outscheme and an adversary that's potentially very cunning, very deceivious, and maybe even have advantages in some ways. And in particular to our rapid global mobility community in 4th Air Force, uh, what we do ties directly to the Secretary of the Air Force operational imperatives. In particular, let's say you know, building a base, operating a base, sustaining that base is a very logistics-centric task, uh, whether it's fueling the fight or sustaining uh, forward capability uh, in the Pacific Theater or any other place. And we'll have to do what General Brown has talked about, which is to hey, change, uh, accelerate change, or lose. And, of course, this ties right into some of our ready, uh, readiness and resiliency priorities from the command. I think Chief Fia is going to talk about that in just a minute. So I, th I think the message is, is clear uh, that I have been delivering along with Chief Fia to our units, which is robust your exercising capability from the planning, tying it to your requirements, to optimization of fiscal resources so that you can effectively uh, deliver what's called Agile Combat Employment, or ACE. And we talked about this a little bit last time as well. And basically, it just means uh, that, uh, you know, maybe strategically we're a little bit uh, predictable, but operationally and tactically we're unpredictable and making it harder for the adversary to prepare uh, for what we, how we might respond to uh, any scenarios that unfold. So, you know, Chief, I've, I've been messaging this for a little while. You and I have been synced when we've had the command chiefs together with commanders. We've talked about it. But I know you've been out on the trail and have uh, many different forums. Uh, and so just for our listeners, you could share a little bit about your messaging to the enlisted force and what this means in particular to our senior NC Corps, NCO Corps and growing future airmen for the future fight. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, your your comments and your, your question couldn't be more more timely Across our fourth Air, Air Force uh, enterprise, it is no secret that you and I have high expectation of senior NCOs. I think everyone is well aware that messaging is out there, and for all the right reasons, not just your and I's high expectations, but that should be the expectation uh, across the board because we rely heavily on our senior NCOs. And to your point, sir, on the on the points that, that you just made, it is it is imperative that our in, and senior NCO core is open minded and receptive to a new way of doing things, flexing, adapting. 
And in order to, to be successful with that and to be successful in us make sure, making sure we're executing any mission, regardless of the complexity or the challenges that come with it, we have to rely on our NCO and Airmen Corps. So that we need to establish that trust, that, that credibility with them, connecting with them, because we need their innovative mindset we need to capitalize on the unique skill sets that they bring to the fight, especially as reservists. It is, uh, you know, our reservists second to none when it comes to unique skill sets, uh, a different way of, uh, of thinking, of doing business, if you will. Just uh, their perspective is mind-blowing at times because they're ready. They're hungry. They're waiting for us, the senior NCO Corps, our, our commanding officers to empower them to be able to get out there and execute these ideas that that they're wanting to share. But with that, going back to to the senior NCO core being open-minded and receptive, again, we have to empower them and at the same time uh, allow them to have a voice when it comes to the conversations of how we're going to get after you name it through the through the challenges, regardless of what that challenge looks like. There's so much to be said about our airmen and our young, our young NCOs, and, and they're hungry. We just got to let them, uh, uh, we just got to allow them to uh, help us out because we need the, the, the same mindset of how we did business in the past. Um, we can no longer operate under that, that mindset. We've got to get more innovative, creative, and, uh, and out, outbid when our adversaries. Hey, Chief, some wonderful points there. And, you know, let me pick up where you finished. You'll recall last year when we did the, the big multi-wing exercise that the units did all on their own and put together. We called that uh, Nexus Dawn. When you and I were out here on the ramp and meeting airmen coming off the back of the airplane, uh, you said, hey, they're leaning forward and they were excited, grinning ear to ear, going, hey, this is the first time I've gone anywhere since tech school, right? And I just think it's so indicative of how much different this next generation of airmen are versus uh, some of our airmen, like I said, that have deployed many times. And we might call that, you know, that's an industry knowledge or, a, you know, practical experience that kind of gets them entrenched into those old ways of doing things in a very structured, you know, chain of command area, which we still need for following orders, following instructions, kind of that rational approach. At the same time, you touched on very important things, which is how do we create a more open collaborative, diverse environment and capture all those skills and ideas that people that have problem solved and work through things in different ways bring to us as a reserve organization. So, hey, some great thoughts there. And, and I think you have a uh, senior enlisted uh, conference coming up. So could you talk a little bit about what that agenda looks like and what, are, what the uh, topics are that we're going to uh, share and talk about with our NCO senior leaders so they can uh, improve their organizations. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And that's one of that's been one of our, our priorities, sir. And I greatly appreciate your support in us teaming up as a NAF command team to make sure that we make this happen. We owe that uh, that development piece to our group SELs. We rely heavily on our group uh, senior enlisted leaders. So uh, here in, a, in about a week or so, we are going to be hosting the first ever fourth Air Force group senior enlisted leader conference where we'll be uh, we'll be discussing topics at a strategic level, tactical and operational, as you just mentioned, sir, to make sure that we are providing our SELs the tools that they need to be successful in these things that we're asking of them and the high expectations that we have of them. And some of these, uh, some of these topics are, you know, the, uh, whether it's ACE, MCA, uh, whether it's uh, working through fiscal constraints and getting creative, not enough manning, not enough um, resources, all inclusive, how are we going to continue to to be successful in our in our diverse mission sets and how we're going to ca capitalize on each other's strengths to be able to again continue to outthink the adversary as much as possible. So those are just some of the topics that we're going to introduce to include some some Power BI tools that are that are going to be introduced to commanding officers and to our senior enlisted here in the near future. I believe some of these uh some of these tools are, have already been provided to our commanding officers, now we're going to introduce them to the group SELs as well. And we'll have the A1 represented there as well. 
uh, a variety of topics again, sir, because we owe that to our, our senior enlisted leaders, and we just want to make sure that they're successful as well. Wow, that's that's a great rundown, Chief, and you touched on some key things just right there at the end as well. When you mentioned A1 or the human resourcing or human resourcing management topics within our organization, and that is how incumbent upon it is at the unit level to have uh, uh, annual review or more frequent review of the staffing plans, or what we call manning plans. What's the accession plan? How do you build that next wave of talent? Are you leveling? Do you understand how the stripes work? Do you understand the enlisted development forums? Do you understand the recurring look at how we structure the enlisted force? And then is your unit preparing to give input and feedback to that? Are you communicating up your uh, enlisted leadership chain so that your command chief has the voice to carry to those senior leader forums and execute that change? Great stuff. Uh, You also touched on uh, the uh, status of funds tool right, an actual mechanism to show in real time what the current state of the fiscal environment looks like. Very excited to see that, and I saw that on the agenda. And, man, you're going to demo it. That's awesome, Um, which I know I I think you invited me to talk a little bit about finances. So just as we wrap up this podcast today, just, you know, I would challenge everyone that, you know, as we get in what we call a resource-constrained environment, and, and what does that mean? It means Look, to update our technology as a military, as an Air Force, as an Air Force Reserve Command, it's incredibly expensive to to update and recapitalize uh, old missions and old weapon systems to new ones. Uh, Personnel costs are going up. Um, So so how do we optimize those resources? So I think it's going to be incumbent on everyone to understand the basics of finances, you know, the difference between the Reserve Personnel Appropriation, or RPA, and the Operations and Maintenance Budget, or O&M. And then how do you feed your wing's financial plan and financial strategy such that you've built a a great defense for the monies that you need? And then are you using the tools to measure your execution against those things? Have you optimized those against an annual training plan at the unit level, right? And for the operators in the flying world, have you uh, optimized every dollar to producing an aircrew force capable of operating uh, the systems in the future. And oh, by the way, do we have the right maintenance structure uh, to sustain that aircraft? And you can apply this to anything, whether it's defenders or CE or AE or, or support or any of those things. Are, are we optimized the fiscal resource to make every airman the optimum warfighter ready to outthink and win against any adversary in the future fight? So some great topics today, Chief. Uh, and Siobhan, thanks again for, for hosting and doing the, the technical work behind to uh, inform our listeners. So I'll just turn it over to you for any closing comments or questions that uh, as we wrap up today. Yes, sir. Thank you both for stopping by again today. I know you both have busy schedules. Um, are there any final comments, uh, any final thoughts for our audience before we sign out? Chief? Just uh, greatly appreciate the the opportunity. I know our airmen, uh, all inclusive, capital A airmen, have reached out, provide us feedback, and they really appreciate the, these podcasts. So we'll continue to to make these happen. I know it's uh, definitely something extremely important to General Pennington and I. So we'll keep them coming. Hey, thank you, Chief. And uh, on the resiliency point, I would just uh, remind the airmen how much uh, the chief and I love and appreciate and respect you. You know, at this level, we get to see all the great recognition and wonderful things that happen. But we also get to see the things that uh, are uh, troubles or challenges in people's lives, whether it's the loss of a loved one or loss of an airman. And those things hit us all hard. So I just uh, remind everybody, make sure that you have a great uh, wingman that you're checking in with on a regular basis. At least one person they knew that you can call. And if you don't think that somebody else has that wingman, you be that person. Reach out on a recurring basis and let someone know uh, that there are resources out there, that somebody cares about them, that we value you, we appreciate your sacrifice, and it's not an easy journey. But know this, the nation's defense is is counting on you to continue to support, defend the Constitution, and uh, you are loved and appreciated and valued for that. So back to you, Siobhan. Thank you, sir, and thank you, Chief, for uh, for stopping by today. And that's it for this episode of Tactical Edge. As always, you can catch up on previous episodes of the show on Apple and Spotify. And don't forget to follow us at Fourth for the latest and greatest. Thank you for listening.